I just can't believe you've all come here for this. This is like unbelievable. I've dragged Wooby out of like his little hideaway in Nature's Valley. I've dragged people from Joburg, from Cape Town, from PE, and they're all here to see analog. So I actually created this so that everybody would come visit me, otherwise I never see them. <laughs> so I don't know, I'd like to thank BZ and everybody else, Wooby, Guy Tillum, Tim Hopwoods and Peter Bardenhorst and Nicole. If it wasn't for Nicole, this would never have actually happened because she did all the framing and she's just run off down there somewhere. So I'm not going to talk all night, but there's so many people to thank. Dennis De Silva, I mean, what else can I say? The man's in the house. From the last, this is our third exhibition, all three exhibitions, the best top exhibitions, Roger Bowden, David Goldblatt, you know, um, Billy Monk, Pierre Croquet, now John Magazine. What do they all have in common? Dennis printed every one of those exhibitions. And he's an unsung hero. Wherever he is, Dennis, in the house. Hiding away in the back. Tomorrow's your night. Tomorrow you up the front here. <laughs> but otherwise, I don't know who else I've missed. Gavin Furlonger and Sean for coming up. Thanks. We don't have COVID this year, so we've made it. And you're here. It's so brilliant. Good to have you in the house. Jeez, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting. A, at least David Chamberlain made it this time as well. <laughs> yeah, the, the darkroom didn't make it. But thank you for all the donations of paper and film. Thank you for all the you know, donations from Bwibi. I'm trying to think who else I could thank, but so you all know who you are. Thank you very much. And let the show begin. Thank you, Bwibi, for coming. Thank you for your wonderful yeah. work. And yeah, let's have a lovely evening. Well, thank you. Uh, I don't really know what I'm actually doing here, because I don't know if it's <laughs> first the developer and then the stop bath. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I've been sidestepping this for quite a while, but when I just look at your enthusiasm, uh, it's for you guys, and it's, it's not about me, it's that we, what we do for photography. Yeah. And uh, I had a, my friend died the other day, and I just had a call from him. Look, he gave me a, a signed print um, from Sam Haskins, and he also gave me this old camera, which I'd like to give to you. Oh, you know how I love cameras. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I gotta get a picture of that. It looks like it looks like a chest full of gold. Yeah. Don't open it. Oh, no, it no. might be a bomb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it might be a magic experience. Okay, so uh, thank you. It'll be just because. Uh, I had to do something and I'm keeping it quite lighthearted. And remember, folks, this is not about me, this is about the image and this is about photography. So, just to prove that I've also been there in the dark room, XA, <laughs> light, and then you know, you click it, and then you know, you click, click, I think, and then you put it there, and then you watch it, the end it comes up, you. <laughs> and then it's, if it was Peter Barden or his print, I'd say, cock. <laughs> And I mean, uh, I've got two or three students sitting here, and uh, I've had many students in the past, and I think, if I had to choose, I think that, look, Peter Barnos was the worst. <laughs> he was the cockiest I've ever had, but he once came to me from Port Elizabeth, and he said to me, can you show me a way in photography? I looked at him for a long while, now Port Elizabeth, XA, how's it? Uh, and I said, listen, man, I can give you something in photography, but I can't take the skate out of you. <laughs> so, but, but now he's, uh, he's so well known in the, in the world of photography, I always buy and support photo hire. <laughs> uh, so just to prove that I've been in it, um, uh, in 1994, uh, I took a trip from Cape Town to uh, Cairo. Uh, and just to show that I actually uh, I've been doing uh, film work for the last uh, worked it out something like 38 years. So that's me in 1994. Uh, to make things easier, I became a member, or I had an ANC card just to make it easier. And it took me nine months. And uh, we had a fridge in our uh, Land Cruiser, but there wasn't food in the fridge. There was <laughs> film. Um, and imagine. That word will come to just now, but just imagine schlepping. This is off Deutsch. Yeah. Uh, schlepping all this shit along 
the six by seven cases that look like you come to the border between Sudan and Egypt and he says bazooka <laughs> it's a long case like that so anyway I don't know they're still lying at home for me but over great days and you know you carry it like this and what made me aware of the image and how things work is not to just fire away like Pitt did and 30, roll of 36 he got one cock shot um, there you got 10 frames per, per film and then you really had to measure alignment shape and and so on so I started in uh, in Cairo and I'm not going to talk about that I started in Cairo, however 1994 rings a bell with us all ding dong ding dong you know we got an independence and uh, uh, like like Graham Abbott to sponsor this he robs banks what I do I steal posters and I you know funny enough when I drive over the country uh, suddenly I look at my rear w window and I mirror and I see the sign just wobble and fall and I turn around and I pick it up <laughs> so, so my home at Nature's Valley is full of signs that have fallen off behind me so um, I stole this poster of N Nelson Mandela uh, vote for Nelson Mandela for president and I took him with wedged between the 6-7 case and the fridge was Nelson all the way to Cairo so when I arrived in Tanin uh, it was the 27th of February 1994 the night the day before the elections and I sat there on the balcony and I thought what's going to become of us where are we so I put Nelson up there on the balcony and I walked downstairs and I carried all these chairs out there like that thinking deeper look I'm not very clever I'll tell you right now but trying to think a bit deeper of all these white parliamentarians sitting there what have they done to us what who will sit in these new chairs in Parliament that was my question and of course the moon rose and the moon rose and the moon rose and the other day I showed this and some young lady said to me excuse me sir but what's that neon tube in the sky <laughs> so, uh, so I, I had to explain you know about reciprocity law failure and how we did it and <laughs> this metered exposure isn't actually that that it's actually that and uh, and then I went all the way nine months and landed up right in the north uh, in the Spitfire bar in Alexandria Egypt that's the only bar in Alexandria where you can get beer so that's me uh, and a portrait I did in Alexandria right in the north of Egypt and then I took Nelson and I said he's a bit crinkled Hellman you did a long journey for me and I always spoke to you on the road and I took him to the point of the Mediterranean there's like a big pier and I floated Nelson into the Mediterranean thank you uh, just for those fundies and I know there are many uh, you know just to refresh us all sorry Lynn for all this uh, <laughs> if you meet it in your actual psychonic whatever light meter we had in those years eh, you can still uh, rent them from photo higher if you want uh, one minute becomes two minutes and two minutes becomes six minutes so it's not reciprocal and so one hour meter becomes three and a four hour Meaning that's why I could take uh, Silesia's with a moon uh, going across the sky with clouds floating past. That's why it's a little diffused and so. And I, I went mad with, I don't know. Some people say I started it. I never claimed that this painting with light, using spotlights to light up things. It happened with me when I went on these big trips because you know I lost interest in teaching people like Peter Barnos or or uh, Hoppy Hopwood you know I mean yeah, good morning class mm. um, <laughs> so I would uh, go on long trips and then uh, light park somewhere in my combi and then light at night little fire going you know hyenas whoop 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 and then I would torch the, the crowns to the cliffs uh, one of my best ones and I think you've all heard the story I must say it again for those people who haven't done film for 38 years the Swartberg Pass I've been over there like 35 times in my life just look how I look then eh? I mean that at half past 10 in the morning beer in hand fiat the, 
bell bottoms the sign, bars closed, remove the sign, go. You know? <laughs> so, uh, that's quite lucky, Ellen. See what you married, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and this is, you know, the sort of real cock shot that probably won't win anything in the Swartberg Pass. However, one night I worked out a full moonrise over the Swartberg Pass. And seeing uh, that me and my, uh, some friends and myself made Tassenberg famous, I took two bottles along to the Swartberg Pass and I placed one, you see, at the bottom there. <laughs> <laughs> and I placed. It's not that funny, actually. <laughs> and I placed one at the top, and, as a, and then, you know, reciprocal law failure. The meter said one and a half hours, but it was actually three hours. I left the camera open, F2016, infinity, and up and down I rode five or six times. Had a slick down there, had a slick up there. After the, after the, after the, the fourth time, you know, I'm getting a little bit hot, you know. I played all my Rolling Stones tapes and Elvis tapes, and so I just feel like a party. So I park right there. You look, I'm moving. <laughs> and I'm moving. And there's nobody arrives, so I'm all alone in the middle of the Swart Bach Pass. That's what it took me to do this uh, analog stuff. Uh, not to. Just to backtrack because, you know, this is quite old-fashioned and, and film and so I came from a, a family, this uh, gentleman there is my grandfather, German, uh, this is the first, just before the First World War, uh, that's my mother and there's my grandmother, strangely enough, in 19, uh, just before the Second World War, 19, I don't know, 20, 1920, my grandfather left and they settled in the United States. Because I think my, my grandmother, what was her surname, Lynn? Ein Schmalz. Ein Schmalz was Jewish. So she had a... And for all my young life, I had my mother to bless and to thank that she took me on trips. She, sh she showed me how to look and to appreciate. And surely that's what it's all about. Where you look and where you stand and what you feel. So that's little uh, Obi there in Gettysburg, Virginia, 1953. <laughs> And okay, he looked like you know a little burki boy there from Pretoria, XA. Um, so, so I'm a little bit uh, tougher there. And this one of my philosophies is life without adventure is no life at all. <laughs> now you know I often get asked, when did you take your first photograph? Yeah, well, when did you? And it was a place called Pisa. This is a little snap. But you'd all seen, you know, when these stupid tourists are trying to hold up the visa. That's so funny, you know. I mean, so I went there, and this is, this is, I went in with my m mother, Molly, Louise, took me to Pisa uh, in 1955. And she bought me, let me just, she bought me this camera, a twin lens reflex Kodak camera which I used as a little boy of eight or nine. It's still the real thing. And before we went to Pisa, she had bought this handbag in Italy. She always wanted to have an Italian handbag. <laughs> so there we have it. But now what young Obi did, that was actually called Kursi. <laughs> <laughs> Kursi, because I was born in Kamildruf and I grew up in Afrikaans, so Kursi. <laughs> so here stands Kursi, and he's, Kursi is now into this, you know. So he checks out this, you know, this leaning tower, you know, and everybody, well then there were fewer people, and um, he thought, and then he turned his camera to make the tower up straight, his format, and took a picture. Click. Right? Wind on lecker. Film. And here it is. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, I, I went home to Kamildruf in Pretoria and I, I, told my, I told my friends that there was this earthquake in Pisa and all the church had, had moved to the side. <laughs> In 1955, and then I, the story became, then I had, then I had, then I got Lynn and I had a son, I think, 
and then one day I took my son, I told the story to my son, Nicky, who was four. And he said, really dad, really dad, can you show me one day? So I took him and I, I, I said to him that the tower was actually leaning. So there he is, my son, with a leaning tower of Pisa. And then to make it quick and short, I will have a break sometime later so that you can all either go away or come back again. <laughs> uh, so when, and then I finally got to matric, extra math class science, um, did a lot of sport, loved Jewish women somehow. Uh, and in my matric year, all I had in my head was really... Um, And then I went to university at Stellenbosch and this was the art school, it's now disappeared, it's now the, what's it Lynn? Conservatorium. Conservatorium, so there's how they looked and so on. And I actually did graphic design, you know, where you did woodcuts and, and etchings and lithographs and stuff like that. And this is one of my etchings uh, that I did. Uh, and then I formulated what I wanted to have my, you know, call my company. You know, not something boring like photo hire. <laughs> you know, so I thought of this as a lack of like focal fountain. <laughs> and I designed like focal fountain photo productions. But you know, no, no, I mean, that's why I've never been a success. Because I mean, who's going to believe in a film called, I mean, photo hire? And then comes Jimmy here, uh, uh, Focal Fontaine. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, uh, I hadn't by then, it's, we still in Bosch, still in Bosch, I hadn't discovered really when to work and when to play. Did more playing and so on. It's when I met Lynn, both athletes, and we did, went to the Soki Yoli, you know, where the, we used to go dancing there in the town hall. And fancy dress, and I stole. I do a lot of stealing actually. It should have been a bank robber. Uh, we stole the art school's geraamte, uh, which we drew. So I took him along, or she. Uh, and we, uh, you see, there was a negative and there's a positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see that, eh? There we are. And these are men of my friends, still friends, in Stellenbosch uh, University. and. Believe it or not, here's a bit of technique. And we started the first color on this sort of drum with a net over it. You pour the chemistry in, the drum would go at a set temperature, uh, warm the, the uh, color developer and so on. There we are, Kodak processor. And your test strip, your test strip will sit underneath this or your print, right? And it'll go through this, this tray. First color prints, sort of 1968, I did that. And then uh, I had a friend called Dan, and there's sort of years of the 60s where everybody wanted to find their Hindu Kush, <laughs> their <laughs> utopia, <laughs> not the Bavillon's clue. <laughs> you know, like hippies were going everywhere, Nirvana, Nirvana. So we decided, me and Dan, that we're going to go to like a Afghanistan. <laughs> so we went, and we got to Turkey, and then we went to Persia. But unfortunately, in, uh, the, the border between Persia, then Persia, the Shah, was closed, so we, we didn't get um, very far. So that's us in the Anatolia in, in Turkey. One of my first uh, black and white shots that I did. And then, uh, now, now, not Kursi anymore, but Obi, you know, walked a little bit more with a swagger. Uh, uh, I then uh, asked, they worked for the Cape Times, during, uh, during the, the holidays or the vacation. This is the first public shot I have had uh, for the Cape Times. You can, I think you can see that 68, uh, the cars in there. And then I finished it uh, and uh, I, I'm, I, I'm gonna tell you this, it's urban legend. My professor, Schroeder, didn't like me because I did sport and art. You know, unlike Beasy, who does, just does art, on a sport, in art. And then, you know, I used to fail history of art, and I used to fail because I did some sport and other things in art. In art. And so, so, you know, I was failing, and then one day, this is urban legend, you can, uh, I, 
I broke into the art school and I stole, I stole the final exams. Well, I looked at them. I saw the final exams, final uh, questionnaire. Went home, I wrote it down and studied everything up and up and that. And I, and next, when the results came, I still failed. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to Munich because um, my my teacher in 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 in, in uh, Stellenbosch, Alice Mertens, said I should. There were only two photographic schools back then, uh, the one in Munich and the one in Vienna. So I went to Munich, Weltstadt, uh, and can you imagine South Africa? Apartheid, uh, OB, and then suddenly thrown into a class of Germans. Remember the students of the 60s, late 60s, you know, the, the Parisian students were throwing rocks. There was just a lot of action going on in here. I was invited as a, as a, a guest student with two or three others into this class of Germans. Uh, so for the first time, I really hit me that I should really know when to work in when to play and I think that was the start when I really realized that I could do this, that, that I could see things if I worked and there's Beatrice we were also in the bottom right there and then um, you know in those years the Rand was there were five Deutsche Mark to one Rand where are we going to now folks but anyway then, you, then my father could even afford to buy us a car which we did and we went to Turkey and we bought long leather jackets check that out and we did a tour of Bavaria and check that out and, and then we even got a little flat which was difficult in those years because you would say uh, ich, bin, ich bin von Südafrika aber ich bin nicht schwarz are you black? and then you say no so, uh, I hope this is not too wokey here for you but anyway and then we got a little flat and we sat together in the little tub <laughs> lovely and then, uh, and then one day you know we had uh, einfarben mit farben, you know, to color in and we colored it in. You see there, look, 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 you see. <laughs> but the first time I realized, uh, folks, about alignment and about shapes, all we really do is, is the calices of m movement. There's a scene and it's you. And it's how you coordinate things that move. So I realized that you can't photograph the world. You can only show small things of it or aspects of, of it. So, I learned alignment and graphic shapes with, with uh, simplicity of line and shapes. You know, so anything can make a photograph. Uh, it all depends on how you see it and where you are. I think... Do that again, Lynn. Do that again, Lynn. I'm getting cold. Do it again. Shut up. <laughs> Do it again. And I think what one's learned, what I've learned in life is, is that, you know, to be honest, photography is a lot of bullshit. I mean, so I've learned that if you meet somebody on the road, you don't, unlike Graham goes, boof, and the whole world shakes. Uh, you sort of say hello and then you chat to people, even in half German or in German, couldn't talk with guests, and then you say hello and then, oh, you, to be nice, so, oh, you're just about to leave and you say, can I just take your picture? So there's a sort of involvement of this an intensity of, of uh, a movement. And uh, I always, when I threw these things together, I said to myself, this is analog. This is an analog festival in that deep, croaky, Chris Christopherson voice. And I said, it's the negative first. And then if you're really good and you get all those chemicals in the row, except you, you put the light on and you get the positive. Of course, I have failed often in life and one of the biggest temptations was of course the beer in uh, in mention this is Polala just to think folks that Jan van Riebeek landed when the shit started actually in 1652 and they were brewing the monks were brewing beer in 1634 <laughs> so that's that makes you think about beer so I often thought about beer and I always one of the first <clears throat> in the 
beer hall, the, the beer garden. So that's me. <laughs> Note, you know, the sort of long hair, you know, quite cool about things, you know. He had a poster, he had to have a poster of Che Guevara. Right? Because he, he weren't in if he didn't. And then I was so lucky to go back to uh, Cuba just before the, they opened up to the Americans, I think, 2014, and I think. And then I actually went to see a statue of him, which I really think was really nice. And, and then, of course, folks, I, I went to Germany in 1970, and then I managed to, excuse me, managed to see the Olympics in 1972, the most of the most unfortunate Olympics there ever was when uh, the Palestinians, sorry, uh, kill all the Germans and during our uh, time in Germany we would travel this is Lynn and then there's w one story I'll, I'll come to later if we have time is that my best friend was called Razmik Artuyan now Razmik Artuyan was an Armenian Armenian who in the 70s didn't have a country he was, he was part of Russia part of Turkey part of Persia he hated them all so he was actually a revolutionary my first revolutionary no. Yes, I'm going to tell you, even in Lindsay, we used to, we used to go to these, these pubs, you know, me and Razmik, Atsuyan, and like act cool, because we were revolutionaries, you know. They would, they would surround us because I had to speak about apartheid, apartheid, you know, like that's bad and all that shit, and for and, you know, and uh, boss and all that, and Razmik spoke about the revolution, how he's going to kill the Shah, and, and, and this and that, and, you know, so... But we never bought a beer because we were surrounded by mostly women. Oh yes. Look why? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I lost touch and I will tell you a most warm hearting story later and just to carry on one of the biggest beer festivals in the world, even larger than the analog festival in Barrydale. <laughs> is the half browse uh, the Oktoberfest and then I started to do you know th this kind of uh, Gary Winogrand stuff and walking around taking pictures 35 mil nickel mat and all that so I took a couple of those portraits now imagine this beer halle 3,000 people two oompa oompa bands playing I mean it's unbelievable and I'm there with Razmik Razmik, and he says, Obi, you know, please don't look, don't look now, but there's a, there's a guy just sort of in the corner of us, he keeps on biting his, his nose. <laughs> now, don't look now. So there's a really behind me, this guy, like, biting his nose. Jesus, and he's just like, here like this. So Razmik says, no, he says, you're going to ask the waitress. So I go up to the waitress, you see. She's quite busy. So I say, I, I said, by then my German's pretty good. And I say, this, behind us is a guy, he's got this long hair and he's biting his, his nose. Ah, that's so and so. Now he's, he, he's trying to hide the fact that he's, a, that he's got a little moustache and that he's, he looks like Adolf Hitler. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. And, go, and so that's... <laughs> So it's a little bit blurred, you know. If you take if you if you take shots in the October first, everything's a little bit blurred. <laughs> but then you know, but then I, I knew it was blurred, so I just uprated it and, and went arty like grainy. And anyway, this I took a portrait of um of uh, Razmik. And then I came back and I didn't really know what to do because when I arrived back um, the phone rings and I'm staying in Durban. And there is a gruffy voice that didn't sound like Chris Christopherson and said, Ons uh, Viet, yeah, is here. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, then, what, then we started this uh, photographic school uh, in Durban, which, which, as I stand here, was the first photographic school in the, the country in 1975. Some of our students, uh, Janine is in Canada, Harold Carlson at the top there is in Sweden, uh, Nikki Vinicum there is in Australia, uh, Patsy Dunn is in the USA, uh, but I, uh, what is interesting, folks, this is, I meant to talk about photography, but it's okay, <laughs> was I kept these alignment of shapes, 
like graphic design. So I walked around Durban with his heart full of a bit of sadness and I, I photographed just simple things, you know, and it, uh, always pounding in me were the contrasts we had in those years of the political situation, of separation, of rich and poor, of haves and have-nots. Or just the simplicity or harshness. You know, why do you cut the head off? I don't know why I cut the head off. Maybe it was my training. Or white couple of tramps at Francis Farewell Square in Durban. One of the first English settlers in Durban. Or lads looking at this poster of a white lady. Or the independence of the Transcar trans in 1976. Or how people look like dogs or dog looks like people. And, and this is interesting. When I stayed in Pretoria, if, if, when I arrived back from Germany, I saw this gardener and, and I had this mask and I put it on the back of his head and I... To this day it still hurt me that us young guys didn't do more to fight against uh, the evils of apartheid or whatever, but we didn't. All we actually did was steal signs. Steal apartheid signs, I mean really, so I just used one of those. And now I just had an exhibition in Johannesburg where I sort of fine-tuned this a bit, added a bit of colour. Oh, we always used to go to Durban to the Blarney Brothers. Lonsdale Hotel, they played there and I, they asked me, I became very friendly with them. Because I should have. Well, if I wanted to sing in a band in, in, uh, in, in uh, Salambosch and I wanted to call it Larry and the Lurkers, but we never really got off the ground. So I designed a cover for them. The Blarney Brothers, this is their first record cover. You can see, you can see me there. You can see Lynn there. You can see a guy called Pepe Pepler there. Blarney Brothers. And then uh, just walking around town. Let me just see if this focus is still okay. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to speed up a little bit. In Pretoria was this Hans Sladon plane with one of our prime ministers. Huge colossus of a sculpture. So, rebellious Obi had to go and do this kind of stuff. You know. <laughs> and he actually then, he collapsed. <laughs> he collapsed, yeah, and, and then showing what is, what is, uh, you know, some of us then didn't really see. No windows. Windows, just coloured bar. That's it. Uh, and then I started to do colour because we imported a a, a Kodak uh, transport machine and I yeah I got all I got all you know I got the enthusiasm like like Graham has you know I got the enthusiasm bought myself a, a Morris Minor with a Mazda a V6 engine in it white tacky small steering wheel bucket seats and off I went <laughs> And I would just cruise through the countryside, you know. Nobody would ever think of robbing me. I'd just push it in th second and third and vroom and rev. Um, it, as you can see, Pomeroy in, in Zululand. Or uh, in that sort of independent homeland, Laboa. Or a Baraguana Pass. Yeah, you know, there, there's, there's Obi on this. Ah! Yes, this is not work, but don't worry about that. So, so I'm at the Nagel Dam in Zululand, and this little chukurki stops me, like stops me. Here I, here I am, fast car. <laughs> stops it, and he, he says he wants to lift. So I say, get in. So I take him, right? And I had a dog behind called Gypsy. Gypsy's never had a Zulu in the car. <laughs> so. <laughs> Buy my coke, and this is the moment, you know, like. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I was very woke, you know, I couldn't dare to do that. And then, uh, Technicon, you know what they had at those years, of the, the, the open day. The open day, folks, is that, you know, when the Technicon uh, invite the public to view the art. Right, so the, all the public stream in there. However, says the director of the Technicon, the art school is not allowed because it's sort of grubby and dirty. And there's sort of hippies there. So they closed that. That's not good. So started my rebellious part. So this is a story of Pizza Hut. Right, final part. So what actually happened is that these students started action painting with color on the walls of the street facing um, Smith Street. And the public would look up at this students throwing action painting like Beezy Bailey would, you know, boom, boom, boom. In fact, he'd sell it, but they didn't. So, um, you can see here, uh, action, yeah, painting, and of course, they, they call me, you know, lecturer, you know, should be respected. Now, can you take some pictures? Yeah, you can take some pictures. So, I suggest that, um, remember famous uh, uh, discus player, world record uh, holder, uh, John van Rienen had a brother called Peter van Rienen, as big, beautiful ass. I shouted from the road, paint Peter's ass red. Right, you know, lecturer. They painted Peter's eyes red and they gave, not a brown eye, but a red eye. Uh, so I said, no, no, wait, wait, that's not good enough. So they did more action paintings, you know, alignment shapes, as we all compose things, you know. And that's my picture of <laughs> Peter, Peter van Rooyen's red eyes. And I just took the picture, but having a voorgevoel Having a sort of intuition that <laughs> this is shit, shit's gonna hit, uh, shit's gonna hit. We haven't, we haven't even, I haven't even gone back to my department when the phone rings and said, I want to see you all, you and, and Peter van Rienen and the sculpture lecturer in my office, Pittendrich, director of the Technicon. So <laughs> he said, What? By then we knew it was coming, so they made a plaster cast of. Peter's ass, <laughs> which we painted red, so we were ready. So I walk in with this Peter's ass. <laughs> so, so these five guys are sitting there in a row, like wise and assholes, you know. And said, "What did you do?" I said, "We did art." So we look, look, yes, yes, some art, and we just held it out the window for the people to look at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, Peter went with me wherever I went to. This is Rose University. <coughs> it's more untidy than uh, Graham's house. And you can see there's a. I, I took uh, Peter along, Pete along on some trips, and I buried him, and to see what the locals had to think <laughs> think of it. And then one day I, I I lost Peter, and I found him in the back cupboard. And I painted him red again, and I said, okay, Pete, this is the end. I'm going to bury you on the Nature's Valley beach, and I'm just going to let the waves take you away. I'm tired of your ass now. <laughs> and off you go. <laughs> and then I got so sad about parting with Pete that I took my nickel mat that's been doing so many years of work, and I just threw it in the sand, threw it in the ocean. Like from now on, I'm going to go big like Excess 6x7. Yeah, Pentax, you know, big and sharp. So this is what I then retrieved. I retrieved the camera again. It's now uh, not going to be given to uh, Abbott. And then as all callings, sh shall I carry on for a bit and then we can stop? Okay, just a few more and then, uh, then we can have a break. And then I decided after talking so much shit, to so many students, disrupting them in Durban, I had to go and do my masters in Germany. Now, in Germany, in those years, you can only have a studio or work professionally if you become a Deutsche Meister to employ somebody. So I had to go. I felt like I would do that. So I'm back in Munich, uh, of course, looking a little bit different to the first time that I arrived there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was in 1979, 
and we got a combi we call gypsy and if yeah masters that was a, a tough course there were nine of us and they really we really labored and worked very hard but they always never lost the fact that you need enthusiasm you need enterprise you need what John said imagination so once again I found the negative and I'm so pleased I found the negative and they said do a self-portrait now folks there was long 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 before selfies and there was uh, I took this cardboard made a hole in it painted on the cardboard painted on my face teased my hair and then uh, I think I then I took took a picture and then I developed that and that is a negative and then I put it in the larger and then I got this and then one assignment where I actually got top marks and the only little thing I'll brag about now uh, is I said zwei Leute im Raum you got to photograph two people in a room that's quite exciting uh, assignment so I had this little flat so I took the mattresses out and I made this sculpture of this face and I had my friend jump against the wall and I jumped against the wall and Lynette the assistant always had to come with me on these trips flashed you know and I started to look at composition stuff or contrast you know I'm so interesting in situations right that just come along depending if if they don't move then you move but it's it's like a like a colossus like a drama and then I started to see see a lot more in the sort of graphic element or, or the stationary or the, the image that might say a bit more than just an instantaneous moment this was a place called the Olympia Galenda in Munich the Olympic grounds and it was a beautiful sculpture of a, a lady in this this field uh, what they call the shoot bag shoot bag is all the war rubble they scrap together to make this this park on these beautiful hills rather interesting and then of course back in Africa and we'll just do this little one because I think I also need a little break here I've often been asked well, what is it what is it what do you need well you need this if you travel through Africa your best companion is definitely a sense of humor sorry the underneath uh, is a Norwegian I was uh, asked to speak at a Norwegian do uh, about my African experiences so, so so I come to this mannequins and I say uh, why are you laughing <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> so they say well can't you see uh, look at that chair and then you know why we're laughing <laughs> And I, uh, in Ludwitz, and I see this lady in the colorful, it's all sort of misty, sort of ocean gray. And I, this lady, and I, I need something. So I tell her that, I tell her that my, if I can buy condoms in this shop, ah, oh, no, no. So I said, no, no, no. My sons, they fuck, no, they, <laughs> for, for Africa. <laughs> yeah, but now they'd like to for Namibia. If we, I'm looking for a Namibian condom, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Namibia condom in snack bar takeaways. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at I showed her. Ongeluk's neck pass. One of the most beautiful, most difficult passes I've been to up to Lesotho. So, at the top of Ongeluk's neck, I see these horses with the meat, transporting meat. So, I say, well, you know, I do speak a bit of cloud. So, this cloud is a from doom there, and they wait, 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 tripod out, and class, okay. I said, I'm gonna, are you smuggling meat? I say, yeah. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to report you to the police. So they looked at me and they say, we are the police. <laughs> so shall we take a break? Yeah, let's take a break.